Oh, Shamir has lost it. Oh, you have to reconnect because of my. Um... Oh, shoot. Um, it go edit. Um... Okay. You got to put my new password. So I it's... think we're live on YouTube. Yeah. So. All you have to do is add 88 <laughs> at the end. No, 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 no. Just add. Now hit login. Pretty sure we're live on YouTube, though. Okay. Well, I don't <laughs> see anybody commenting. We'll see. Can't log in right now. No, you can't. It hasn't gone live. Yes, it has. It's live. Oh. Well, how do we... Well, it's... Uh... Is it live on Facebook now, too? Nope. Be oh. entertaining. I'm going to figure this out. Um, we're going to be live tonight <laughs> in just a minute. We're trying to get Facebook figured out. We are going to be showing you all about milk paint. It was a non-scheduled live because we have been working all day at the church and we were going to edit a video it ends up like, I do not have time to edit a video. I'm like, let's go live and just talk about milk paint. Oh, look, your mom's on here. Hey mom. All right. Let, let me try it real quick. Yeah. It's not going. So talking all about milk paint. So Jamie, Jamie changed her password to Facebook and I didn't get it all the places. So <laughs> we're not on Facebook. We're just on YouTube right now. But having a milk paint sale, um, it's Earth Day, right? Is it today or is it this weekend? It's today. I've been planting stuff all day. So, you know, it feels, feels right. Um, but the code at checkout, if you go to jamierayvintage.com, you got your milk paint in your car, you're ready to check out. Type in the code Earth Day, no caps needed, all one word, and you'll be good to go. I give up. You told it no? So just on YouTube? I don't know how to get it onto Facebook. Like I told people we're going to be live on Facebook. You're just going to have to upload this one there that year. Yep. All It'll right, sweet. All right. Let's get started. Um, <laughs> if you guys have questions about milk paint, go ahead and comment with your questions so that way we can help you out because I know a lot of people think that it's scary and I actually think it's pretty easy, but we also use it a lot. So kind of, you know one of those things. I feel like the fear is, oh no, I mixed up this milk paint. What if it all chips off? I don't want to have to buy more. Um, but there's also, also practice involved in there with any paint mm -hmm. line. And I don't think it all chips off most of the time. Well, it can happen. It but can happen. I'm just going to say, <laughs> no risk, no reward. So the great thing about milk paint is it's all natural. It's eco-friendly. It's bio-certified. It's got all those things. It basically lasts forever until you add water to it. So it's shelf stable for a really long time. And you get like a really great crackly chippy finish that I've not been able to achieve with any other kind of paint. With great awesomeness comes great responsibility. <laughs> and you have to learn how to use the paint. So we're gonna just do a basic paint finish here. This is an old trunk. I've wiped the dirt off. It's not super shiny. If it was super shiny, I would add, Zeb's got it over there. I'm not gonna Extra use Bond. Today. Extra Bond. And on the back of the extra bond, it gives you, um, it's a two parts paint to one part extra bond. If you do that, it'll make your paint not chip off if it's super shiny. If so, it's super shiny and you want it to be chippy, just know that it might just all chip off. I suggest using a piece that is medium shine Yes. or part shiny, part not, not shiny, if that makes sense. Because anywhere, just think about it, it's anywhere where your piece is thirsty, it's going to soak up that milk paint and it's not going to let it go. Anywhere where it's got a little bit of shine, it's going to let it go. Does yeah. Does that make sense? It does. And if, you're, if your wood is raw and you want it to chip, then do whatever you want your base coat to be on your wall, raw wood, whether it's stain, paint, whatever. And then you're going to want to seal it really good. So you can do a couple coats of top coat or you could, if you can go outside, you can spray lacquer on it. And then before your top coat is all the way dry when it's still a little tacky then paint your milk paint on and it will chip if you still can't get it to chip get it wet and get a heat gun out and then you can get it to chip so those are like my biggest tips as far as that goes this this uh chest is from the church um it's one of the we don't have too many more things that were left there this one's been outside like since yeah. we bought the church so um we'll extra yes it will still be food safe um, with the bond. And if you use hemp oil to seal it with, that's also going to make it still be food safe. Oh, there's, there's a, old... oh, this newspaper looks like it was glued to the bottom or decoupage to the bottom. Oh, that's cool. Oh, where is this? 
Is this from Lehigh? I don't know, but let's see what was happening in August, August 27th, 1958. All right, hold on. While he's doing that, we've got two scoops of Sweetie Jane. Um, and Sweetie Jane is named after Sasha. That's what her mom used to call her. I don't know if you guys know that, but it's a cute little, cute little tidbit there. This is from Oakland. Oh, the Oakland Tribune. Who's from Oakland? I don't know. So we're going to do two parts. Um, well, one part milk paint to one part warm, warm water. And I had two scoops of milk paint. So I'm going to do two scoops of warm water. I like to do just a little bit less on the water. It's kind of like when you're making rice and you want it to not be soupy. I like my milk paint a little thicker. So I just decrease the water by just a little bit. All right. Get this. Strawberry jam. 89 cents but it's four pounds <laughs> of jam. Uh, oh. Powdered milk, two pound package, 73 cents. Vienna sausage, five for 99 cents. I'm gonna need Plum rose water. hams, two pounds, $1.99. That's fun. I'm gonna have to look through that. All right, here, you mix this up. It's like goofy and I'm getting it everywhere. All right. I've been digging in the dirt all day, so my muscles are like, oh, wow. what are you doing? You really did. I did. I somehow mix it wrong. No? I was going to try to teach people how to make milk paint, and then I. I, messed I don't it know up. how you got this though. This is like a ball of powder. It's like a milk paint popsicle. Hang on, I'll fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I put more than how many scoops did I put in there? I thought I put two scoops of milk paint, which would have been two scoops of water. Hard to say. Really. Okay, well, first rule with milk paint: don't be super exhausted from digging in the dirt all day and helping Zeb put in a fence. We've been working at the church, and apparently we think that we're like, I don't know, farmhands because we're putting in our own fence. We're buying trees and raspberry bushes. I have 750, I'm not even kidding, plant starts. They're started. They're coming starting up. Starting inside the church to put in our giant garden that we haven't tilled up yet. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that your water and my ratio is to off. powder ratio is well, way <laughs> It's, I'm gonna show you guys. It's solid. Don't show them. I'm supposed to be a professional. This is the Q. Milk, okay, so this is the paint. live Q and A on what not to do. Uh, Sally just said that I'm supposed to be a professional. True. Um, Pauline, sometimes my milk paint is very frothy. Is that ideal? Um, just let it let the bubbles settle. Actually, after you mix it, especially if you use an immersion blender or you really mix it up, just let it sit for like 10 or 20 minutes, and those bubbles should pop. Let's see if Happy we can get birthday, going. Robin. All right, I'm going to get this link and share it on um, Facebook. Just be like, hey, we couldn't get Facebook to work. Sorry, guys. While I fix your milk paint situation. Okay, you fix the milk paint situation. I mean, I might have to get an immersion blender. Let's see if I can get it to go like this. <laughs> like a mo molinillo or whatever? I'm going to make a fire. Is that the word molinillo? Were you making like hot chocolate? Oh, yeah, those are cool. Okay. I feel like I don't see. I'm coming into this blind. I don't know how many scoops you did. I don't know how many scoops I did either. Anyway, we're going to show you how even average DIYers like us I feel like can use the milk paint. And the, the cool thing about this milk paint, I don't even know if Jamie mentioned it. It's food safe, bio certified. So you can use it yeah, I said pretty that. much anywhere you want. How's that working? I did say that, but how's that working out for you? We're getting there. We're gonna have a lot. It's of like paint. salt wash right now. Would you need more water? I don't know. I have more water. You could start. Out. You need more water. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe I already had some in there, and then I put more. Oh well, it happens. Um, if you go on to the website and order milk paint, use the code Earth Day, and you can save twenty percent. That lasts until four twenty-five twenty-two at um, 10 p.m. Mountain Time. I didn't even know that we were going to have a milk paint sale. And then Sasha posted it. And I was like, listen, I'm busy, man. We just launched the pre-order for the DIY paints. I'm working on my stencil release. And now we're having a milk paint sale. I was not prepared. So here we are live, so here we're live. at the end of a very busy day. It's fun, though. We, I love going live and hanging out with you guys. I love going live. So we have some <laughs> chunks on the bottom still, but I think. You want me to get the immersion blender? The top is still good. I think we're fine. I think we're fine. All right. It's good. 
We're trying to teach them all things. Squinch it with the immersion blender. It'll make it smoother. Okay, I'll try. So here's the situation. The Jamie best doesn't way know. To mix up, I was trying to use a whisk because everybody has a whisk, but the best way to mix up milk paint, especially if you're going to mix up a lot of it, is to use an immersion blender. And if you have a problem with chunks, an immersion blender is definitely going to work that out. So there you go. Um, Marcia says, I have my dad's trunk from the army. I did two scoops of each, like two scoops of paint and two scoops. I think there was already milk paint in there. Like, I think I scooped it out before we went live. And then I put she had it pre-portioned so and I then she portioned it again. Two scoops. I don't know. It's, it's All right. Just, you can tell this is what we use this for. The good news is there's some experts and they wrote the directions on the back. It doesn't quite fit in the bottom. So let me do some scraping. Do you need more water in there? No, I think we're good. I think we're good on water. I feel like if we can make this look good after all this, then we're like, yeah, milk paint's not bad. Legit. We, we're here to show you how to make mistakes so that you guys don't have to deal with this at your house. My favorite place to buy immersion blenders is the thrift store. You can get them for like five bucks or less usually. All right, that's good. Hold What's on. Do you got a brush? There's a lot of stuff in the corner still. Look, it's like, it's like cottage cheese in the corner. Oh, my gosh. Ugh. My nose is running because it's been windy and it's springtime. We got hailed on today. We were working in the hail. And I'm like, and then the thunder started. And I'm like, yeah, it's about a mile and a half off. We probably should go do something. So we went to the nursery and got a and bunch we of trees. Four trees for our thing and nine berry bushes. What the apple trees are cool because they're big. Yeah, well, and they're cool kind of apple and we got too. honey crisp which that's like should we get fuji or honey crisp i'm like get honey crisp because fuji not fuji sorry galas galas are always on sale at the store but honey crisp are always like three four dollars a pound i'm like get the spendy ones all right i want this one yeah the tree was the same price let's get painting we've been here for like 10 minutes we had to do some splaining some splaining yeah, you can't have that over there you gotta share it hold on just pour some out all right pour it out pour it out all right so this is sweetie jane and the first coat is going to look streaky, but the second coat is going to look good. If you let it air dry, that's probably best practice. But if we heat gun this, we might get more chipping. So if you're uh, wanting, we will for sure get more chipping if we heat gun it. So if you want chipping, heat gun is always good. It can also make it crackle. Like it'll crackle on its own. But if you heat gun it, especially if you wet distress it, you'll get crackle. There's nothing wrong with forcing the issue. Sometimes it does it all on its own self, okay? And the other thing too, is it sands really, really smooth. So if you're not the best painter in the world, it's okay. Just get enough coats on there and it'll be good. All right, I'm gonna see if I have any questions about milk paint. Has anybody used milk paint and have you had any situations arise? Tell me about the situation. If you have questions, this is the perfect time. Q&A is up. Amy says she just loves us. Oh, I'm, good. I'm glad somebody does. Well, thanks, Amy. Appreciate that. Thanks, Amy. Although I'm like, is this really Sweetie Jane? It's looking really light. Could this be sweet water? It looks too light for sweet water. Though. Yeah, it's hard to so say. So my milk paint comes in. I actually think I might have lied. It might be sweet water. I buy a gallon and then I put it in these containers. We actually sell it by the gallon, which is the cheapest way to buy it. And then sometimes I forget what color it is. If you buy anything smaller than a gallon, it's going to come in a bag. A bag like this. I'm just seeing. Where's Jamie's mic? Oh, can you not hear me? It's right there. They can probably hear you all right. They just want to really hear you. You really want to hear me? It was Leslie. Leslie wants to hear me. Um... How is my dad doing? He He's stubborn. We'll say that. He's not, it's not that. His podiatrist is a great guy, but he did not use a nonstick pad when he removed his toenail yesterday. So I get this call from my mother. Dad has had, I mean, I'm in the hailstorm digging up what can only be described as the world's largest chive collection. Um, and my mom is telling me that my dad has had his foot soaking for five hours and the pad is not coming off because the doctor did not use a nonstick gauze pad, even though he did put Neosporin on it. And she's like, I don't know what we're going to do. Your dad will not let me get it off. 
He's freaking out. I'm like, just tell him to put some more Neosporin on it and wrap that sucker up and I will deal with it when I get home because he's on antibiotics. He's had the toe never removed. It's clean. It's not, nothing bad's going to happen. Then I come home and my dad's like, don't you come near my toe. Don't come near my toe. So I went to look at it. I barely touched it. And he does not like any kind of like, he doesn't deal well with pain. Let's just put it that way. And I know that toes can be very sensitive. I totally understand that. <laughs> Finally, I was like, all right, if it doesn't come off, I will take you to urgent care tomorrow and we will let them wound care it. Cause I, I didn't like, are you going to just live with that on there for the rest of your life? And then I made him a chocolate cake and he said that that made his toe feel better. So <laughs> there you have it. That is what's going on with my dad. Okay. I'm going to paint these handles up front. I'm doing it. So milk paint, if you can't get it to crack, a lot of the crackle has to depend on what's underneath the milk paint itself. So um, if the finish underneath is old, a lot of times it will crackle. If there's any kind of grease or whatever on it, it will crackle. If it's like a really shiny modern piece, it's not going to crackle unless you wet distress it and heat gun it. And then it may chip more than you want. I don't suggest unless you've used milk paint a lot, using it on a very modern, super shiny piece, because it's just hard to get that old age look. So if you have an older piece with like older varnish on it, that for me at least works the best. It sticks really great to metal too. Oh yeah. Add extra bond and you can get it to stick to metal. I tried clicking on the link. I think it's because, um, Odelia is not, um, a, like she's not part of Jamie Ray vintage. So I don't think it's letting her drop links on YouTube. Let me see if don't click out of there, please. <laughs> I'm not gonna don't, don't, don't change it on the computer. No, I was actually just going to see if I could go do it myself. Oh, gotcha. All right. So it was a great green before. The cool thing about this and the finish that we're probably going to get on this by the time we're done here is that that green is going to be coming back through. Yeah, it's going to be good. I like, I like where this is headed. All right, here, I'm dropping the link. See if this link works, guys. So this one should work. And then um, just use the code Earth Day and you save 20% off of milk paint, farmhouse finishes, and bond. All it's, one word, no spaces in Earth Day. It's not valid on the oil wax or the hemp oil or the or the regular wax from Sweet Pickens, just the paint and the bond. Um, so Bass Wife says, <laughs> I'm not feeling well. Can you ship me chocolate cake? <laughs> the truth is I also want a chocolate cake. Nice one. If you come over, though, I'll give you a piece. Although there's only, it's not the prettiest chocolate cake. I was tired when I made it and I was more into it. It was still it warm and you just flopped the, the frosting on there. I think she's going to show you guys her chocolate cake. I want to show you. This is how you know you're in a big family. I made this cake tonight. This is all that's left. And Zeb hasn't even had any yet. And I'm not even, and Jack hasn't had any either. Nope. Little Jack. So there's two more humans that have to eat this and Harrington hasn't been by. The whole cake's going to be gone. But I want to show you, this is the correct way to make chocolate cake. Sorry, guys, it's not pretty. I can make a pretty cake, but you see how the frosting ratio is? Homemade cream cheese frosting with cheesecake pudding mix in it. It's like that so, so thick. It's the best way. I also learned if you put mayonnaise instead of oil in your cake, it makes it moist. And then I always do milk instead of water and an extra egg. And then I throw in a package of cheesecake pudding. It's good. All right, I'm going to go grab the heat gun so that we can get this dry and show you. Not going to paint the bottom on camera, mostly because, well, we'd have to flip it over. It's not dry. So my dad will get it changed up. He, we won't leave it on there. He's had, he's had it out and it's been cleaned. It's just like a little portion we couldn't get off. Here's the, here's the, the crux of it. And Zeb can hold him down if he has to. If I got to go in there and clean it, I'm actually a very good caregiver, but I, there will be cleaning to be had. If you go in there and clean it, I'm leaving the house. Because this is the deal. If it comes between causing him a little bit of discomfort or him not being able to walk because the infection gets worse and he's a diabetic and things escalate, I'm going to scrub that thing. I don't care how much he screams and belly aches. Yeah. There is a cheesecake pudding mix. This is what I use and I don't make, I just put it in dry. And then I also use this when I'm making my frosting. 
Because as soon as he start, stops walking, things are probably going to go pretty downhill pretty quick if he's unable to get around on his own. Ashley says, I'm sorry, Jamie. What was it you said about which one's on sale? Okay, so Sweet Pickens Milk Paint Farmhouse Finishes are both on sale, as is the Extra Bond. All you have to do is enter code Earth Day when you check out and save 20%. Carla says you're the boss. It is true. When sometimes when the when the crap hits the fan, usually Zeb figures it out. If he deems it important. If it does if he doesn't deem it important, then I usually get to figure it out. It's just the way it is. <laughs> or or if I think she can do it on her own. Sometimes I don't want to. But I do sometimes. I guess I have to put my big girl panties on. I, I kill spiders sometimes when you're not here. I just thought you you're went and hid somewhere else in another part of the house <laughs> when, you, when you saw spiders. Um, Bass Wife says when she makes mayo um, brown, make mug brownies, she uses mayonnaise and she says it makes them amazing. Really? All right, so we've got this first coat almost dry on here. And you're definitely going to notice that the second coat is going to go on. Hey, let's show them really more. quick here. Oh. It's going to go on a lot more full coverage. So this is this is one coat. It's covered pretty well, but it's milk paint is thinner and it lays really flat. And when you sand it, like if you're painting a piece like a wood piece of furniture, once you get your milk paint on there, when you sand that, you can get it buttery, buttery smooth. And if you do enough coats of milk paint, you won't even see your brush strokes. One of my favorite colors of milk paint. Sweetie Jane, Sweetwater, which I'm 99% positive this is Sweetwater because Sweetie Jane this is- This is Sweetwater. This is Sweetwater. Sweet, Sweetie Jane's greener than it's, this. Yeah, well, it's more blue. It's like- Well, it's darker. Darker. Um, I like Flower Sack for the white, and I like First Crush. I don't know. I like a lot of them. I I'm also a big like, fan of O'Olive. Oh, yeah. Our bar stools are O'Olive. I like to mix 50-50 Sweetie Jane to Pantry Door. What would happen if you add cheesecake mix instead of extra bond? I don't think it'd work the way I want it to work. What did I use to seal my butcher block countertops? Heather, I used white oil wax. I actually had a mishap when I did my back ones and didn't left it on too long and had to sand it off. We left and, it on overnight. And then, yeah, I left it on before overnight. wiping it back and it was a little splotchy. And then I sanded it off. And then I never went back and put more on it. So my back countertops are actually not great. But my island, I followed the directions on the bottle. My kitchen island has held up amazing with the white oil wax, especially considering we use it like a workbench. I got a little bit of crackle back here. I'll try to show you before Jamie gets the second coat on there. This is probably from the heat gun. Um, Laura, farmhouse is milk paint, um, farmhouse finishes. It just has a bonding agent in it, so it's less likely to chip and crackle. It doesn't mean that it won't, but for the most part, it's not going to chip and crackle because it comes with a bonding agent in it. And there are some colors of Sweet Pickens that do not come in farmhouse finishes because Sweet Pickens is Sasha's boutique line, and so she has some special colors that only come in Sweet Pickens. So you guys can see the first coat was actually really, really streaky. And the second coat is so much better. Can you zoom in, Zim? Yeah, let me bring them close. Since I want to show heat, you guys because I always I'm just heat gun it over here. It always is surprising to me how much. Look how bad this is over here, like super streaky, and we're getting basically full coverage, even with a super light color um, over a dark green on our second coat. So you probably could do one more coat if you wanted, like hundred, hundred percent. But two coats is usually all I ever need. Unless I'm doing white. That's another story. Or if you mix your milk paint too thin. This is actually about right. Consistency, not too thick, not too thin. Yeah, you want it like a melted milk, melted milkshake. Yes. So go ahead. Is it still wet over there? Yeah, but the back is ready to go. 
Okay. Well, I'm just going to second coat this whole thing. We will probably paint the bottom off camera. Yeah, we'll paint it. It would be weird unpainted. I yeah. Think. It is not, if you've used DIY paint before, it's not as chalky as DIY paint. It'll still powder. It'll still powder, it. but it's not quite like as chalky. If you chalky. do a sand distress or you, or you like to sand in between coats to get it really smooth, it powders off. It doesn't gum up. Yeah, it won't gum up. If you use too much extra bond, you can get it to be a little bit gummy. So just know that. Also, if you add extra bond to your payment, payment. <laughs> if you add extra bond to your paint, um, you definitely are only going to have max an hour to two hours to use that paint before it starts gelling up. If you don't put extra bond in your paint and you're using a lighter color, sometimes you can put it in the fridge and it'll last up to 24 hours. Darker colors don't seem to last as long. So just try to mix up the, the amount of paint that you're going to use. The other thing about extra bond is it only goes in the first coat. Do not put it in your second coat or else it could make it chip and activate the first coat. The other thing I'm always like surprised by because I don't use it as often um, as DIY paint is that milk paint will drip. And DIY paint is so thick, it doesn't drip as much. So I'm always careful to like go wherever there's hardware and catch my drips. Klingon brushes are hands down the best brushes that we currently sell. I'm using the O35. Earlier I was using the F30. Zebra brushes are good. Um, they're just a lot less expensive. And I know that not everybody is always ready to invest in an expensive brush. So that's why we carry both because zipper brushes are a good quality brush for what you pay for them, but Klingons are definitely superior. The other thing about Klingons is if you let them soak in water, don't, don't soak it past the metal part because it'll rust, but if you let them soak in water, um, the paint literally falls out of the brush. They're so easy to clean. Even DIY paint, which is so pigmented, and can sometimes be a pain to get out. That comes out really good. Do you want to paint the front? Not? Yeah. Do you, do, you, do you get that side yet? I don't think that side's ready yet. Leslie says, I chose Zipper and everyone seems to go with Klingon. Klingon is just a really well-made brush. It's expensive. So it's definitely an investment. The Zippers are nice because if you do forget the paint in it overnight or you yeah. don't wash it out, it's not like... It's a $30, $40 brush. You can, and it's going to work well for a ton of uses on the zipper brush. For sure. Um, I did have a clean on though that had liquid patina on it overnight. And then I soaked it, not past the metal part because you don't want it to rust, but I soaked it for a day and I was able to soften it enough to wash it. And then now we use it. Dad, do you have an emergency? Oh, okay. he's just watching. Hi, Dad. What? You're gonna you're gonna come hobble in? Is your toe falling off? Did you get enough chocolate cake? Yes. Okay. I'm good. All right. We I, will. I, I, I come out here to see what you were doing so I could see if I could get it on the TV. On oh. Phone. I mean, on my. Phone. On your phone. I'll put it on there later if you want me to. Okay. Love you, Daddy. All right. He wants to watch us. I'm like, don't you get enough of us? <laughs> sometimes he'll like lock, get his phone on there and then it'll be like an older one sometimes you have a hard time oops sometimes you have a hard time cleaning your zipper brush if you do just be sure to not let the paint sit on there too long and you can also soak it in um Fabric softener, sometimes that helps. But yeah, they are a little bit harder to clean your paint off of. Essentially, Kimberly says, my dad's sweet. He's pretty sweet most of the time. Keep him fed and get him enough sleep, and he's a great guy. And don't poke him. Can you hit the button? It's squishy. Oh, yeah. So I'm just going to dry this real quick and I'm going to show you wet distressing. We might not get a lot of chipping on this because it was so dry, but we'll see. Uh, you know, you never know. 
Um, we are getting some crackle from the heat gun. I'm sure you guys have seen us do it. If you haven't, we've got lots of videos on it. One of my favorite things to use milk paint for is for like sealing cutting or uh, staining cutting boards and then using the hemp oil to seal them and rolling pins and all, all the things that are used with food. Yeah, if you want to make a food safe stain, just water down a gray or brown milk paint or mix them and water them down. And then you can use them like a stain and then seal them with hemp oil and you'll have a food safe um, piece of wood. I'm gonna go get another heat gun. Yeah, your paint brushes will dye the color of paint you've used, Zebra especially. The Klingons, I feel like it does release the paint well enough, but when you use a heavily pigmented paint, it happens. But as long as the water comes clean, it doesn't matter what color it's dyed. Okay, I'm almost all the way dry here. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a damp rag and wet distress it. We'll see if we can get some chipping going. Now, here's the thing. If it gets super chippy, make sure you sand it till it stops chipping. You can't, there's no way to mush the chippy pieces back on. Yeah. Once they, they're going to chip. Don't fight it. Don't try to seal it a hundred times because liquid sealers, if you're already having a lot of chipping, a liquid top worse. coat will make it, it'll reactivate it and make it chip even more than it already is. Exactly. Um, so if it's super chippy, I would suggest only sealing it with clear wax once all the chipping has stopped and you removed all the loose paint. Sometimes it's just a great textured base coat. Yeah. If it gets too chippy and you don't like it, sand it smooth and then add extra bond to your next layer and do it. Sometimes there's something on your piece that no matter what is going to resist the paint. Watch your hands. And if that happens and it just won't stick, you can sand it smooth, seal it with shellac, not lacquer, shellac. Let the shellac dry overnight so it's all the way dry and then paint it with bond. And what that shellac does, it'll seal in whatever grease or resist is on your piece. Because even if you've cleaned your piece, old stuff has crap on it that is mysterious and sometimes you just can't get it off it's just the way it is all right let me get a washcloth here we do have a little bit of crackle up on here yeah, i'm gonna try to bring it close hold off on that and let me show them okay actually thanks I'll for bring... being here with us we have 263 people on here with us awesome all right. Can you, Can see you that? talk about transfers with milk paint? So if your piece is that showing up um, on camera, it's so bright. It's hard to see. Okay. Now there you go. Now you can see it. There we got it. So if you use a crackle medium, you'll get crackle, but you don't usually get the really fine crackle you get and it crackle. looks unnatural. Whereas milk paint, most of the time when it crackles, looks like a pretty natural age um, crackle. We have a crackle right. medium that we sell yeah, from Sweet from Pickens. Sweet <laughs> but I need to get back to the question that Rashonda had. Okay. Um, she was talking about the transfer. So make sure that all the chipping is done. If it's super chippy, just know if you put a transfer on it, it might chip off the transfer because whatever's underneath it, it's just going to make it come off, if that makes sense. Then you're going to want to um, make sure there's no extra dust lying around from distressing. Seal it let it dry and then put a transfer on it. You can put a transfer straight up on milk paint. Um, just make sure it's dry and there's no dust. Um, we could try the Do new IOD it? transfer that- Do you want to try one? Uh, that one with the skull on it and the flowers. Oh. Desperado, I've been wanting to try that for a while. This is a good piece to put that I on I feel like too. it would be. So- You want to go grab we'll, it real yeah. quick? Let me, let me wet distress this top because this is where we're going to do it. Okay. And then- probably on the front too. So I'm just gonna go over it with water. This can make it ridiculously chippy and I might be sad, but I don't care. Or you might be really happy. I might be really happy, that's right. We embrace chippiness around here. The longer your milk paint sits, the harder it's going to be to get the wet distress to work. Just know that because it starts to cure and get really hard. I like how it's coming off of the metal. Really yeah, good. that's part of the reason I wanna do that was to show off all those studs there. All right, can you heat gun that? Yep. So we can get a coat of sealer. Oh, we you want me to heat gun this top? I'm going to let it dry for just a sec. All right. 
Because sometimes when you wet distress, if you heat gun over that, that's you lose the whole thing. <laughs> that's true. We don't want it to be too chippy. We won't be able to try that transfer on it. it oh my gosh, pockets. Odelia's prom dress has pockets. I love it. Did they have pockets before? Or did they put it in there? Oh, nice. But we're live on YouTube right now. <laughs> Do you want to come and show everybody your prom dress? Is that why you came down here? Would you guys like to see Odelia's prom dress? Come down. I'm sure they would all love it. All right. Ta-da. Is it twirly? Just don't get any milk paint on it because that thing wasn't cheap. We bought it at the cute wedding boutique on Main Street. And then it had to be altered because she's only five foot three. All right, I'm going to try to find that transfer. Did she make it to five three? She says she's five three. That's what she keeps telling me. I feel like she's 5'3 on platforms. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm going to heat gun the front. I'm going to give this a little quick. We'll get it well, dry. We've got, we've got to get it dry. We've got to put a sealer on there. Are you going to do a sealer do you before think, you do? Well, usually you seal underneath it, but since I didn't distress it with sandpaper once it's dry there won't be any dust yeah i mean you just wipe this down with a damp cloth so okay. it's it's gonna be dust free oh delia got an apothecary prom dress i had nothing to do with it she picked it out while i was there but yes you paid i paid <laughs> i did pay for the dress and the jewelry and the alterations but a really pretty dress and we were able to support a local small business so that's always good i've always wanted to stop by the boutique on main street but never had a reason until now well they they specialize in wedding dresses mm -hmm, but they have a ton a ton of prom dresses really? and they've been around since the 50s and they're right next to the house that we believe is your grandpa <laughs> peterson's house yep i need to do some more i research. don't even think right next to i think the two buildings are connected jeff says we have a short one also five foot um, I'm only 5'4", so people aren't super tall in my family. <laughs> Woo. All right. Although Harrington broke six feet, and he came from you. He also came from you. True, but so, did she, but so did she. <laughs> people are very tall in your family. My girls, neither one of them, like Eliza's was... really slowed down. She's like 5'4". I thought, I thought Eliza was going to be tall like my sister Kate. Her feet are still pretty large, and she's only 13, so she could still grow some. Yeah, but I don't think she's going to be tall like your sisters. Well, all your sisters are tall. Barb's like, what, 5'9", 5'8"? I think she's like 5'6", 5 5'7". 5 she is not. She she is at least 5'8". This part right, this was still This crackle wet. really showed up. Let me see if I can bring you in. Watch your arm there. It's always really good to do it on a piece that you have a contrasting color. And that's going to make that crackle just really, really shine. I'm just trying to get all the wet. So love our DIY paint to death. We we use it a ton. We probably but use it two to one. for this sort of finish. Just making sure there's nothing this wet is, left. This is going to be, if you want crackle, if you want that old style look, like, uh, like you didn't actually make it crackle, use the milk paint. So if you were doing this at home, let it dry. Let it dry. Seal it with top coat. Do not attempt to be on live TV and do it 10 minutes after you painted it. But I'm wiping my hand across it to make sure there's no wet spots. So what ones are we going to use on this? Have you guys, we haven't really showed this off because we got this and then we took off on a vacation. Yeah, we went to the England. And it's kind of out of my like, typical well house of designs so i've kind of struggled with it but i, I honestly think love the buffalo and the skull we can do the skull and the flowers it's got the flowers yeah let's do the skull and the flowers okay will it fit the skull is i don't big. like my last white wax piece how it turned out can i relax then re-wax re-white wax how to fix it so if you don't like a piece and it's already been waxed you need to use mineral spirits and then that will pull the wax off then lightly sand it and then you can repaint it. All right, I think I'm gonna do the skull. Do we have an applicator stick? Question, oh yeah, I have it in the drawer. Question of the day. Query. I do have an applicator stick. 
So you need to cut off the excess too. Let me see if we can find scissors. Here's an applicator stick. Oh, that didn't work the way I wanted to. Let me find scissors. This is like bonus round. We came on to talk about milk paint. Now we're playing with IOD. Well, we got the milk paint on. We've talked about all the things. That's all the harder milk paint is. What Where's you just the saw second part of this skull? What? I don't know. I keep looking. Is, do they not have, have this, it in order? Oh, in here? I, I hid a pair of scissors and the kids have not absconded with it. All right. Hang on. There's the flowers. There's kind of an idea of how big these are. Do you want to do the words on there or do you want to? I'm going to leave the words. Yeah. Okay. Oh, here it is. Fine. Did you find it? Is it in the mm -hmm. way back? It's right there. Weird that it's not in order. Look, I don't make the rules. If I made that, it would be out of order because nothing I do is in order. I'm going to heat gun the front while you do that. Okay. Let's see. All right. So I think I'm going to line it up right here. I've got a rivet. Oh, they're not the same. We're going to go off the top one. You got, I would cut it off. I guess it doesn't matter, Han. Huh? It's not like I mean, an not, not a lot of it's going to stay over here. Okay, taking the backer off. Going to fully commit. All right, here we go. Where did you put that applicator at, Steve? Mm, I had it on top. Did you move it? Um, nope, nope I that's underneath. Stuff, I put stuff on it. That's excellent. All right, I'm going to see if there's questions. Oh, we got crackle on the back and we didn't even heat gun it. I heat gunned it back Oh, you here. heat gunned it? Okay. Yeah. Is, that, is that upside down? No. No. It's right side up facing the front, which is the correct way. Is there a difference between Sweet Pickens and Farmhouse Finishes? Yes. So Farmhouse Finishes has a built-in bond. And while it can still crack and chip, it just won't as much. And on most pieces, it'll just go on nice and smooth. So that's the long and the short answer. If you wet distress Farmhouse Finishes and you heat gun it, you can get it to chip and crackle. So sometimes if I want to have a little bit more control, I'll use it. It also mixes up smoother. So if I'm going to be using it in a heat gun, some not heat gun, a paint gun, sometimes I'll use farmhouse finishes. So this piece, we didn't use extra bond in the milk paint. We did not seal before we did the transfer and it's going on just fine. Now know that this piece that we did was really old and crusty and dry. Like ever, there was no shine left on this piece. The other thing too is that we wet distressed and let it dry. We did not powder anything up by sanding with sandpaper because if you get any powder underneath this transfer, it's not going to stick. You kind of want the best adhesion possible. Let's see if there's any questions. Oh no, Bobby's daughter flooded the basement, not the first time. We've had flooded basements, have we not? A couple times with Harrington. Yeah. It's good times. You get out the shop vac, you suck up all the water, you clean the carpets, you, you put the, the big, big fans, on. fans on. Luckily, we live in like the second driest state in the nation, so it's not horrible. But if you live somewhere humid, it can be really difficult to get it to dry out. And then you got to get a remediation company. Company. Or just do new carpet and new pad if your basement's got a concrete floor like ours. Most to do. We had a flood in the basement at the church. That's because the pipe burst. Yeah, that was a freezing situation. Wendy said. You could paint the flowers with the Bohemian Brights. That would be pretty. I think we're going to keep this like kind of, sorry, I have the hiccups, kind of neutral because we want the milk paint and the transfer to really shine. Plus the transfer is kind of busy. So I feel like it works well, but you could, I think that'd be really pretty. I've seen other people paint in the flowers and it's good. 
There are a lot of words on here. The words. She's 19. The, well, our son. Uh, Harrington's 19. Harrington was uh, graduated from high school and he snuck a cat into our basement. And then he put the cat in the window well and he didn't want it to be cold. So he put a heater in the window well with it and the heater cracked our window. <laughs> I also made him pay for the window. Our window guy was like, well, you can probably replace the glass yourself and then it would save you a trip fee. And I'm like, nope. My son's paying for this, so you charge what you charge. Oh, he did I got sneak, the... sneak in a cat twice. The first time he snuck in a cat, we were in France. So it wouldn't be such a big deal, except for his sister's really allergic. And, and so Redrick is, is, too. Now, this might prove cats. difficult here. You might want to make sure that nothing's chipping off. We'll see. I'm trying to hurry. You're doing a really good job. <laughs> I could help you, but... No, it's 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 okay. Words are probably the most difficult thing to use on a transfer. And if you were doing this correctly, you would wait till it dried all the way. You put a coat of sealer underneath, wait till that dried all the way, and then you'd put it on. I am getting some chipping around here. That's awesome. Under underneath this. Um, if you do it fresh like this without a sealer underneath, that's when it's a little bit more difficult to get the transfer to come off. But you're doing a really good job. Like this stick found some crackle that wasn't going to stay anyway, and it's peeling it up. Uh, Marlene, I would not use the sage green background underneath Mar Marie Antoinette. I would paint it white because the paper is kind of pale anyways. And so if you put that underneath it, you're going to lose a lot of the detail in it. When you paint it white, it really brightens up that Marie Antoinette paper. Bobby says now she's mad at us. Kids do that sometimes. They like screw stuff up and then they get mad at you. You're like... Is this some alternate universe? <laughs> Part of raising them. If you're just tuning in, um, milk paint is on sale. We're having flash sale for Earth Day. It's 20% off. Just use the code Earth Day at JamieRayVintage.com, and it's for milk paint, farmhouse finishes, and bond. Okay, essentially, Kimberly says the transfer is cool. Yeah, we've been waiting for the right like piece of like project to do. And there's a lot of different sheets in it, so we're definitely going to be able to use it again. My logo, oh. It's over your covered. face. Yeah, we probably need to back up a little bit. Thanks. I was just showing them up close on this. You guys already saw my face. It's cool. You don't need to see it more than once. We got All right. I'm almost done with this. We'll have the one side revealed. See what chipped and what didn't. You're doing so good. I'm just sitting here watching you struggle. Oh, it hasn't, got, like, it hasn't really been minutes. a struggle. It's just a lot of script. I have some old cupboards that are enamel black from 70s. Wonder if milk paint would be the best way to revert it to a chippy piece. Um, I would definitely test it out on one of the cupboard doors and see how it reacts. And that's what I tell a lot of people. Like if you haven't used milk paint a lot and you're not sure how it's going to react, then I would try it on just a small portion, like a drawer or a door and see what happens before you do the whole piece. Cause that'll let you know, A, if you like the way it looks or B, if you need to do some sort of bond or anything else to try to make it adhere better. I've used it enough that if I see a piece in person, I can generally decide how I want to apply the milk paint with bond or without, but I can't tell from a picture or even if somebody tells me, like I literally have to see the piece and then I know. If you can see your face in the finish, it's going to all chip off. <laughs> yeah. That's usually a good rule of thumb. Oh, look, your t-shirt goes with a transfer. I know. It's a pioneer ox because our high school is Lehigh Pioneers and... Uh, pioneer it's people pushing oxen. a handcart used to be their logo, but that wasn't really tough. So the football team picked up the oxen because it looks a little tougher. And now all the sports use it. Now all the sports use it. They're like a woman in a bonnet and a handcart or an ox. We, we go with the ox. Top four milk paint colors. Okay, Sweetie Jane, Pantry Jor. Flower sack, first crush. I feel like, can, can you do top four? Maybe yeah, Lantern, that would be top five. Tops. Rock? 
I like Lantern, but it's a, like a smoky grayish black. No, Lantern though. is not. Yeah, it's well, good. it's not. It's black, black. All right. Pro tip though, if you paint something in Lantern and you want it to be very black, seal it with black oil wax or the Sweet Pickens black wax, and it'll make that black even richer. It'll make it black, black. <laughs> You can also use black wax over DIY's little black dress, and it'll help that black be richer. <clears throat> I need mean, you always make things look so easy. I promise you, they're not. If, like, we do not have any special pro tips. We break all the rules, and we can make it look, we can make it look all right. Yep. If we can do it, you can do it. Honestly, I just laid this out here, and now I'm, I'm rubbing it on, like... Well, the good news is by the time you get to doing the flowers on the front, it'll be dry. Yeah. Without the heat gun. The only, I only need to distress this other side. And then when we're not live anymore, I'll paint the bottom. So I know we're talking all about milk paint, but we've been doing lots of work over at the church. Probably a video Monday for an update on that if you guys have been following along with the progress on the church renovation. Yeah, we were going to do it today, but we just – Time got away from us, and Zeb barely even made it to here at 7 o'clock. Really, I think it was the it. storm today. I mean, we were out there in the hail and the rain trying to get stuff done. Yeah, we were. We started working we about 7.45 today. We don't have lots of days where we can just get out there and work, and today was going to be one of those days, and then I was going to edit tonight. And then we're like, you know what? We didn't film enough because of all this rain. So we'll we'll do some more tomorrow possibly wrap up some projects Monday so that we have something to actually show you instead of just demo. <laughs> I know you can't see this on the screen, but there are, now that I've wet distressed and we've done two coats, there are no brush strokes. Like it's just a smooth paint finish. Uh oh, Oh, Becky J new sub here. Glad I found your channel. Thank you. Essentially, Kim release this already looks incredible. Yeah, this was a pretty sad um, piece. It had been outside. I don't even know. I think it came out of the basement, and then they decided not to take it with them, and they left it for us at the church. And if you're just tuning in, we bought an old church to move our store into. Not, we're not talking about the church we like go to church at. But anyways, they left it outside, and it's been out there since October. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this it needed some love. They said you could put flowers on top of the skull. Yeah, so I was thinking it would be cool to just bring it around here and not do anything on the front. Oh, like do it around the edge? But mm -hmm. I think it would be too busy. Too much? Yeah. Okay. Is it upside down for display, the transfer? No, it's it's right side up. It's right side That's up. The See, the handle's right here. Are you so if you were, if you were facing so if it. you were gonna carry it, it will be upside down, but we're not ever gonna carry this. This is meant to like sit almost like a coffee table. Yeah. So I guess it would be upside down if you were gonna carry it, but I'm not planning on using it for luggage. Nope. So bass wife. I always call her Bass Wife, and I know it's bass. She put a little guitar by the bass, so that way people will remember that it's a bass guitar, not a fish. Nice. I'll probably still screw it up. Um, CJ said legs. Yeah, you could to you could totally um, add feet to the bottom. That would be really really cute. We have done that. It's pretty simple on these old trunks, especially the heavier duty ones. You just put a bolt in from the top, and you're done. People are disagreeing with us. They said it is upside down. I guess oh, it well, just depends on the way you look at it. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to carry it, it for sure is upside down. I'm not going to disagree with you on that. But, so think but of whoever how, buys this, I doubt they're going to carry it around. So think the reason that I did this is like when you're looking at, when you're deciding which direction to put your fabric on a chair. For me, I always want to, when I'm looking at the chair, for it to be right side up. And if you're using this for decor, like on wherever, and you're looking at it, looking at the handle, you would put the handle out so you could see. This is right it. side up. If we flipped, if we flipped it the other way, then it would be upside down when you were looking at it. Yeah, that makes sense.
Lynn says it's not upside down. <laughs> it's it's not upside down if you're going to do a coffee table with it. But if you were going to carry it and use it as an actual trunk, yeah, it's upside down. I actually did try to check an old trunk once, but it was slightly too large and they wouldn't let it on the plane. And I'm really sad because there was a chair inside of the old trunk. And mostly I just thought it was going to be hilarious for Zeb to pick me up from the airport and for me to have a giant chair inside of a trunk that I checked in a bag. But it didn't work. So the trunk and the chair are still in Pennsylvania. Luckily, I only spent like 20 bucks on the pair. All right. This is coming together pretty good here. Does anybody else have questions about milk paint? All right. So just to recap, one part milk paint to one part warm water. Make sure you measure. <laughs> if you've been here from the beginning, you know why we're laughing. Um, the best rule of thumb is to use an immersion blender. We can use a whisk or a fork with a smaller amount, but if you use an immersion blender, you're going to get a creamy milk paint every time. Do not take the blender and move it up and down. That will froth it and create bubbles. And then it's just a little harder to use and you have to wait for the bubbles to go away. You just put the immersion blender down the bottom, just let it do its work and then pull it out. If you let your milk paint sit for like 10 or 20 minutes after you mix it, it will thicken up a bit, which is good. And your milk paint should be about a melted milkshake consistency. Your first coat is always going to be kind of streaky, so don't freak out. And your second coat will generally give you almost full coverage unless you're using a really light color or if your piece is really, really slick and your paint's having a hard time adhering, sometimes it takes more coats. If your piece is super shiny, then you probably should add some extra bond in it. And if you're unsure, just do a small area and see how it reacts so you can decide whether or not you need extra bond. Extra bond has directions on the back. If you follow those directions exactly, you're probably not going to get any chipping at all. So sometimes I'll just throw a little bit of extra bond in there and not as much as it calls for. Extra bond only goes in the first coat not the second coat. So you only have to use it one time. When you go to seal your piece, you can use a water-based top coat like Sweet Pickets Top Coat or DIY Big Top or clear wax or oil wax. If your piece is super chippy, do not attempt to use a water-based top coat like Sweet Pickets Top Coat or DIY Big Top because it will just keep chipping. So if your piece is super chippy, just sand it smooth and then use only clear wax. Did I cover everything? I think you got it. Uh, it's all natural, bio-certified, and food safe. And if you want the sealer to be food safe as well, then I would suggest using hemp oil because it's the only food safe sealer that we offer. Boom. All right. Will it keep if you mix up too much? If it's a light color and you haven't added extra bond, put a lid on it, stick it in the fridge. It should keep up to 24 hours. Doesn't always work. If it has extra bond in it or it's a dark color, you got two hours max. So be really careful. It's better to mix up a little bit than mix up a little bit more than to have a bunch and not be able to use it. Or then you just start painting everything you can in the next two hours. Sometimes I get a lot of stuff on. Is that not sticking there? No, it is. I just each, I'm having to go over each word. Yeah. Well, so if you're using a big transfer, it's like all one piece and you just get the edge and then you ride the wave. These words are like all little tiny, teeny pieces. Mm -hmm. I am able to write it a little bit, but. Does the consistency affect how much it chips? I think the thinner milk paint does chip more, in my opinion. But no, it shouldn't. Sometimes if you don't mix it all the way, you'll get little chunks in the milk paint. I just sand those off and then that sometimes will help to the chippy. If you make it way too thick, and it's on a shiny piece, it will chip off in big flakes. So what type is best for wood? Um, milk paint or DIY? It just depends on the finish that you want. Both of them are excellent. DIY is clay based, so it's thicker. Um, so th like this doesn't have brush strokes on it, but if you wanted a thick texture, I feel like it's easier to get thick texture. Actually, I know it's easier to get thick texture from DIY. Also, um, milk paint does have highs and lows, but DIY paint because of clay, if you buff it really good, you can get highs and lows. And um, DIY is already mixed, so sometimes that it's, that's easier. And DIY will not chip the way milk paint does. So just depends on what you want your piece to look like. I generally will mix them if I want like a layered effect. Good job. 
like a boss, even though you're exhausted from putting in a fence all day. <laughs> That's right. You know what? The fence is in. The sheep are getting moved over tomorrow. There you have it. Can we get some flowers? Um, on the front? <laughs> yeah. You're so good to me. I just know do we're we not. we have here. time to do flowers? Oh, this is still wet. Yeah, we have a couple of minutes. Oh, yeah. Let's dry that real quick. We can do flowers on the front. Now oh, it's right. upside down. Now it's upside now down. Now it's upside down. Yeah. Well, I just know we're not going to get back to this. So I want to finish it. Can you heat gun that? I'm going to paint the bottom while you do that. Okay. And then all we have to do is clear wax it. So to help with the uh, the upside downness of the the skull, I'm going to put the flowers and orient them in such a way that, you know, it'll then be right side up. <laughs> Here's the thing. I hardly ever seal my milk paint if it's a piece going in my own home. I have a cabinet that was an old, like, chicken coop type cabinet. I don't know. Like, it was crusty, rusty when we got it. And I've never sealed it. And it's been just fine. You want to seal milk paint because if it gets wet, it can have a problem. Also, it's hard to clean if it's not sealed. But I feel like there's just some pieces that I they're really dry and they get like this authentic chippy finish and I just don't like to seal them. All right, you're gonna do those flowers? Yep. If you guys have ever seen my green cabinet that's in my family room, that's never been sealed. And I think I painted it three or four years ago. Sasha also has many pieces she's never sealed. I'm also not a furniture scrubber, so it's not like I'm washing it all the time or ever for that matter. All right. There's a pretty good angle for you guys to watch. I don't think we ever actually sealed our coffee table. All right, stop painting up here on the edge. Oh, sorry. I'm never going to get this done. <laughs> Which vacuum did I decide on? I went with the V10 Dyson Animal um, because I got it at Costco. And if it doesn't work, they will, don't get on that. They will take it back. All right. So I've got And these. I do like it. I've also only vacuumed with it like once since I got it. So We've we'll had see. one before, actually. And yeah. it did not... It did, it did not make it at our other house because lots of carpet in that other house. Here, we've got like three rugs and hardwood floors. But I bought the Dyson. They make an attachment for hardwood floors. It's like a sponge roller. And I bought that, and it works really good on the hardwood floors. <laughs> Odelia says it's good we didn't seal the coffee table because the dogs ate it. That is true. They did. They ate like two of the legs. Are the words all the in way English up. on that transfer? I don't even know what it says. I haven't actually read it. Hopefully the uh, the IOD sisters didn't do me wrong and say something bad on there. Angela says I love it. I'm not a fan of the skull, but it's still really pretty. I think that you can use it, and it doesn't have oh. to be like super cowboyish. Does that make sense? Like you think in this application, it's cool. So this one is a little bit like the words, and it's it's a, like an outline design. But I'm able to ride the wave a little bit, like Jamie was talking about. Yeah, these are going to go on a lot faster. Um, the dogs ate the coffee table. Yes, they did. They chewed they on chewed the, the legs. The legs. Both luckily, the legs I know a guy that can make me do on ones. one side. Yeah, luckily I turned those legs, so no biggie. Um, is farmhouse finishes included in the sale? Yes. So farmhouse finishes is included in the sale. Who's that? Jack. It's like what Video game drama from the oh, sounds of it. They shut the playroom door, so we're good. What did Odelia say? Oh, they were laughing about the dogs. Yeah, I wouldn't use milk paint on a piece that was super, super shiny. I'm not saying you can't because you could add extra bond and you could get it to a adhere but then it's not going to chip and then kind of what's the point right like i like milk paint because i want my piece to look old and aged and so i like to use it on things that i know it's going to look good on marlene says i could get, have given she could have given me her hardwood floor attachment it's okay because i bought the amazon knockoff and it was only like 30 bucks it's like a never-ending struggle to find things that survive our house anything dishwasher we have these really nice fridges the kids have broken off the front of the drawer in the fridge and front of the drawer in the freezer 
I was gonna bolt them on, but um, at this point, I'm like, eh. we just left the front of the drawers. They're like, they're off. like sliding drawers. Yeah, we just left it shelves. off, and we just leave the stuff in there, and then we just grab it without opening the drawer. It's pretty handy. <laughs> so there's a lot of like bumpy situation over on this corner, where the rivets and the uh, corner metal piece is. You're doing good. So I'm just kind of putting it on there. What'll stay will stay. You want to figure out which piece you mm -hmm. want next? I'm thinking this big one right here. You want to cut it out? Yeah. Thank you. So this is looking a little stark on here since the milk paint did give us such a good kind of chippy finish. But we can distress it too. I think that looks way too brand new. We're definitely going to yeah, have to get sandpaper out. Yeah, that's what I'm out. seeing on that. And on the top too. I'm going to go see if I can find some sandpaper and then we'll show them a little bit of distressing before we go. Here's that. This is probably not going to fit you like the whole thing, but you can get it mostly on there. What the trouble is, is which is right side up and not on this. Do we have sandpaper? What? All right. While you're doing that, let's talk about not milk paint. <laughs> Have how you guys do you, how do you want new? this on here? These are the new uh, oh, yeah. Jamie Ray Vintage Colors from DIY Paint. This is cottage color, and this is an all-in-one paint. So if you have not seen the new colors, there you are. They're up for pre-order now. Ta-da! Now what did you want, sweetie? How do you want this flower on here? That um, like, is the question. That is the question. Um, Like this. I think, yeah. So I want the leaf to be here and then this to go to the edge. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm going to see if I can find sandpaper in the garage though. Um, there's 220 in the top drawer of my black toolbox. Okay. That's how she said, right? Is that how she said, guys? <laughs> Too late now. Can't go back. Hi, baby chickies. Hello, baby chickies. So hopefully you guys got a good angle there. I got a really tall tripod about a month and a half ago and haven't even really used it for top down views. This one actually will come out and go completely over horizontally, but we'll see if I ever get around to using it like that. <laughs> you can still hear my mom in the video. Sorry, did you hear me talk to my chickens? We have um, new baby chicks and they're so cute. They're in the garage because they're not big enough to introduce to the flock. So well, I'm they worried gotta... that the older hens will just pick on them and attack them. And they can fit through the slats in the pen because the chickens aren't behind chicken wire. They're just in the pen with Han and Chewy. And the little chickens can fit through there. And I'm afraid that Cody and Rex will have a field oh, day. They will absolutely be having themselves some chicken nuggets if they got out. So... We're keeping them safe in the garage. So I'm just using 220 sandpaper to distress this and age the transfer and make it look less like a sticker, more like it was hand painted on. Also, after you put on the transfer, make sure you mush it down um, so none of it is coming up. And then to seal this piece, we'll probably just use like clear wax. Oh, some of this was wet. All right. It'll be okay. It's adding to the patina. It's still sticking on. These new ideas. Love OD. the paint color. Thank you. Sweetwater is fun. I thought it was Sweetie Jane, and then we got it on. I was like, oh, that is Sweetwater. But these new IOD uh, transfers stick. I'm pretty really sure I have Sweetwater well. on my bum now. Oh, I'm sure if you're sitting over there. Yeah. Sorry. Right. All my clothes are paint clothes. Earth Day is the code. Yes. Yeah. So if you go to jamierayvintage.com until 4 25 22. All one word, no spaces. Use the code Earth Day to save 20% off of milk paint and bond and farmhouse finishes. Um, and that ends at 10 p.m. Mountain Time. On Monday. On Monday, the 25th. Watch your I'm just I'm rolling. You. I'm rolling. I got it. I got you, boo. So when you have an uneven surface like this, you really just want to make sure that the transfer is all the way down. So use your finger 
use a piece of this plastic and really burnish it is what this it's is called. really uneven right here i'm basically just <laughs> not attacking it here with the stick what could i use on my boyfriend to make him work better <laughs> what's that term on game shows show me the money <laughs> chocolate cake i know zeb didn't really want to help with the business until he saw that it was like it made money and he's also naturally creative so well, and you were wanting me to help after I'd already worked like 12 hours at my regular That's job. That's true. He's a lot more willing to help now that it's a full-time job. You don't need to do capital E. Just all one word, Earth Day. It doesn't matter. Lowercase is fine. Oh, in Encinitas, um, she's on – Debbie's shop is in – on Pacific Coast Highway. I don't know the exact address. It's like 100 or something like but that. But it's, it's right really next to Hanson's Surf Shop, which is a huge surf shop in Encinitas. So if you can't find it, if you look up Hanson's Surf Shop, you'll find it. It's really close to Swami's Beach. Hi, guys. We're bringing this home like right now. Milk paint in an hour. Trunk's done. We also... Threw in some IOD surprise. I needed a little extra situation. So to give you an idea on price, um, we will probably sell this for about $125 once it's all sealed up. Um, and that's taking into account the cost of the milk paint and that we use two and a half sheets of a transfer. So always make sure you're taking into account the if you are a reseller, how much product you're putting on a piece. Okay, I'm going to just distress this. And we are done. I will also distress the top, too. All and right, look, I, the bottom got a coat of paint on it. Yep. Before and I will, we were done. I will put another coat on it later, but yeah. All right. And it, like, the milk paint chipped off and the transfer just kind of came with it. Yeah. So keep that in mind. I think this works well because this transfer is not like one solid piece. Mm -hmm. So it might be harder if it was like a solid piece. I feel like we need to uh, take a picture in our in our sitting area over here and show them what it's going to look like as like a coffee table or something like that. Like right now? No, no, no. Oh, take like a picture tomorrow show... when the lighting's good. Okay. Yeah. All right, sweet. Can you guys see the few little chippies that happened there and the crackle? We'll get some up close pictures, but I think it turned out really great. If you guys have any other questions, go ahead and ask them, even if we're not live, and we'll answer them. Or you can DM us on Facebook or email info at jamierayvintage.com. Best suggestion is practice. practice. Uh, we weren't good at milk paint for... I don't know. I don't want to say we weren't good at it because we had some really good success right off the like bat. I like four or five projects <laughs> till I really got the hang of it. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, okay. And then it just kind of clicked and we were going. But I also didn't have anybody that used it that I could watch that made videos. Sasha didn't make videos. Yeah. All I have were the instructions <laughs> on the bag. So I feel like it might be easier if you've already watched. Let me do it. But if you like this kind of video, please hit that share button. You can copy and paste this and throw it in Facebook. Text your friends. It helps us out a ton. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Jane Ray Vintage for more. DIY. Love you guys. Thanks for joining us. And we will see you tomorrow night for the thrift haul. Bye, guys.